RPC-580 ARC Caution: The following entry is outdated. The following archive database entry has been preserved in its entirety and digitally transcribed from its original documentation. For the ease of understanding of the RPC AACS Paris format, please review the Lexicon Octoritus history page. This file is dated 12 1945. Registered Phenomena Code 580. Informal Designate Beast Blood. Object Risk Red. Containment Degree Severe. Equivalent to the modern Gamma Rating. Primary Hazard. Sapient, aggressive. Secondary hazard, grouped. Tertiary hazard, infectious. Equivalent to the modern biohazard threat. Number contained: 13. Reporting personnel: Dr. Sloshlofen. Recently pacified specimens of RPC-580-1 are to be immediately transferred to Site-008 for dissection. RAVAAF forces have been instructed to prioritize the tracking, apprehension, and termination of RPC-580-1 specimens while on the battlefields of Europe. The RPC Authority Volunteer Army for the Allied Forces was a collaborative effort of several ANORGs to combat GARD forces during and after World War II. Unfortunately, due to the hyper-aggressive nature of these enemies, Successfully detaining live subjects had proven to be exceedingly arduous. In the event our forces manage to capture a beast, they must try to restrain the afflicted in a reinforced, man-proof holding cell until reinforcements arrived, the act of which must be attempted prior to their transformation, which is believed to take up to several minutes. Based on reports from our men downrange, shelled-out tanks may act as suitable holding chambers while in the field. Do not attempt to capture any specimen while in its bestial form. In the event you are forced to face a full-fledged RPC-580-1 beast, shoot to kill. To correctly identify an undercover agent afflicted by RPC-580, search for civilians near Allied bases and rally points that house command staff or are near the front lines. Look for individuals acting favorably to Allied soldiers, are males of German descent and display some form of thrombosis of the veins. These men may also be identified by a profound hunger for raw meat. Do not attempt to apprehend a target alone or during the hours of darkness. Pacification Systems While in their human form, the afflicted are susceptible to any injury that may incapacitate or neutralize a standard human. However, once afflicted, RPC-580 troops transform into their monstrous state. They display increased strength, durability, and bloodlust. To minimize losses while combating a beast, engage them from the farthest possible distance with the highest caliber round available. Maintain this for several seconds once the entity is immobilized. Some reports have claimed that anything less than anti-material rounds or anti-personal fragmentation devices are unable to terminate an RPC-580-1 beast but these claims have not yet been substantiated. Any soldier believed to come into direct contact with a still-living beast must also be considered one and dealt with per field command's discretion. Pacification Note Several reports have surfaced that some instances of RPC-580 rapidly exsanguate post-pacification. Most notably, this has been observed happening to live specimens when starved in captivity at Site-008. Blood pools from these instances coagulate into a semi-solid state and begin to structure themselves into multi-tendrilled entities. They will then immediately seek out any living creature within their vicinity and attempt to enter an orifice or open wound on their prey. Any person or creature that makes contact with these blood entities must also be considered an RPC-580 instance. Standard neutralization principles apply and possibly animated blood remains must be sent to Site-008. Object Description RPC-580 is a believed experimental biological weapon of unknown origin, currently being utilized by the GARD-DAFA, and shoots Stoffel Special Forces for clandestine operations in the European theater under the moniker Beowulf. 
the German Anomalous Research Division Deutschen Anomalforschung Abteilung, was the premier and org of the German National Socialist Workers' Party. Persons afflicted with RPC-580 display animal hybrid characteristics and are able to transform into bestial chimeras seemingly at will. These monstrous forms have been designated as RPC-580-1. These animalistic states are predatory and carnivorous in nature. Carcasses collected by RAVAAF forces all display large maxillary canines and various complex claw-like features, similar to those found in tetrapods. The outer keratin layers of these structures are unique in several ways. They are abnormally large for the entity's size and show durability akin to steel. The lower sections of the beast display elongated and strengthened tarsals as seen in other digigrade-like anatomies. The hyperdeveloped sections of the hind legs are used to silently stalk our forces and support the creature's immense weight, as the average beast weighs roughly 225 to 270 kg. Each beast displays pelage akin to canids of the Canis variety. The animal's pelt, as we have observed with our recent push into the Ardennes, also seems to change per transformation, with a now higher percentage of white coats ambushing the back lines of our fortifications. We currently believe that RPC-580 is highly adaptable per transformation to any situation given their natural camouflage and fluctuating bone density. Additional observation of pacified instances has shown that fur density is also adapted per transformation. Although this theory is the cause of much debate between Site-008 researchers and RAVAAF ground reports. Warning from the desk of GD War it has come to our attention that some of our men in the field are taking the pelts of recently pacified RPC-580-1 beasts as trophies. Due to the risk of breaking normalcy and possible contamination, RAVAAF Command has begun issuing new field guides on how to safely skin and handle a beast skin. Additionally, we have authorized monetary compensation for each captured or killed beast. Men. Keep your wits about you out there and happy hunting. Addendum Operation Crocane On 12, 1940, several RPC-580-1 beasts were discovered among the surviving German defectors aiding the authority in the new Swabia conflict. Also known as the Austral War, the conflict originated from a spatial anomaly known as the New Swabia Rift located in the Schirmacher Oasis. Queen Maud Land, Antarctica. For further information on the Austral War, see RPC-543. Following a brief interrogation performed by ACI officers at OL Site-543, RAVAAF Command became aware of the previously unknown underground SS base, housing the GARD Biowarfare Division. The Reich's Biokriegs was the biowarfare subdivision of GARD's Ananaba branch. Under the direct supervision of GD War, Operation Crocane was formulated to put an end to all current Schutzstaffel Bavwolf operations and GARD bioweapon testing, including RPC-580. The mission was organized into a two-part multi-force raid on the Führhauptquartier Bavwolf compound located near Venetia, Ukraine. Literal translation: Führer Headquarters, also abbreviated as FHQ. Führhof Quartiers with official bases utilized by Adolf Hitler and the SS High Command. Transcribed below is a portion of the mission logs. Operation Crocane Audio Log Transcripts Department Protection Date 1945 Subject RPC-580 Authorization 3-RAVAAF Commanding Officers Captain Dory Phillips, Lt. Buford Babcock Forward. GD War has personally authorized the destruction of Führhauptquartier Werewolf by any means necessary. The initial assault will consist of VBS and USAAF bombers attacking the superficial portion of the facility. The mass bombing has been predicted to spread to the outskirts of Venetia within the allowable 5% civilian casualty acceptable loss rate. 
Captain Phillips would then lead a ground assault to breach and clear the lower sections of the mining compound and bunker areas. Once in position, the teens will detonate their supplied explosives to initiate a controlled collapse of the entire subterranean structure. Both platoons have been equipped with experimental long-range radio relays for this operation per GD Ward's request. Captain Phillips' 15th Heavy Brigade combat team has been supplemented with reinforcements from Lt. Babcock's 107th Infantry Division for this mission. Approximately 40 men between the two units. Began Log 1511 1945 Captain Phillips First Team Radio Check 1212 Master Sergeant Hill Second Team Checks Do you read his command? RAVAAF Command Command copies. We read you loud and clear. Lt. Babcock GD wasn't messing around with that bomb and run. Had the flyboys glass the whole damn forest. Christ. Hardly anything left topside. I can see why the Soviets passed on this place, though. False corridors and dead ends everywhere. Sergeant Sherman Cap! Place the charges here! Captain Phillips Keep your goddamn voice down. Jesus, Babcock! Keep a hand on your greenhorns. Lt. Babcock Sorry, sir. Look. There's several tunnels running deeper this way. Captain Phillips Raj, keep some of your men up here to cover the entrance. The rest of us get the let out. We have a tight schedule to keep, and watch your fire lines down there. It's too cramped and quiet for comfort. Audio silence for several minutes as the teens move deeper. Lt. Babcock Look at all these abandoned tunnels. You reckon they were looking for something down here? Sergeant Sherman Hell if I know. I just want out of here as fast as possible. Did you hear what one of these things did to a howler? Corporal Finley What's a howler? Sergeant Sherman It's a… Captain Phillips Cut the chatter. I see something ahead. The sounds of several bootsteps are heard as the team clears the room. Corporal Finley Clear. Sergeant Sherman Clear. Lieutenant Babcock All clear, sir. Copy. Now let's see what we have here. It's pretty damn cold, and the wall is lined with sealed vats of some sort. So I'm gonna assume this is some sort of storage lab. The vials are labeled. First, one says Schattenblut. Looks like oil, but mixed with air. Shit's just floating on nothing. Schattenblut, or Shadow's Blood, is believed to be the viscous substance found on RPC-913, and a possible major component of Compound B-76. Lt. Babcock This one over here says Ty… Typhon Fleisch. Can't quite make it out, but sure as shit ain't German. Captain Phillips I honestly don't care what it says. Let's rig a charge to that beam over the… Corporal Finley Cap, we got a body outside in the hall over here. Slight retching is heard in the background. Sergeant Sherman Fuck! He's all torn apart. Isn't this one of their guys? Captain Phillips Yeah, definitely a wolf attack. You can tell by how torn up he is. Plus, look how those parts are just gnawed on. Just like how they killed Bucky back in France. Corporal Finley Did they… lick up all the blood? Captain Phillips Yep, just like a fucking wolf. Rig that center column and let's keep going. I don't know what's going on here, but at least we know our intel was spot on now. Several minutes pass as the room is rigged and the team moves on in silence. Captain Phillips I'm seeing some light ahead. I think I'm losing connect… Too far down. We're entering a huge cap… Lieutenant Babcock Shit. We got contact in here. Captain Phillips Keep your head down. They haven't noticed us yet. Corporal Finley What are they doing down there, Cap? Are they eat each other? Sergeant Sherman Fuck, I can't st My eyes burn. Captain Phillips I said keep down. I'm trying to see. Is that… Look at the size of that… In the wall. Gunshots are heard over the static. Captain Phillips Babcock, you fuck… We've been made. Set the last charges and fall back. Snarls and howls ring out as several automatic gunshots are heard. Captain Phillips Move! 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 Shit! Where's Sherman? 
Corporal Finley. They him. Captain Phillips. Dead end. God damn it. First team's radio signal is lost. RAV AAF Command. Come in, second team. I repeat. Come in, second team. Master Sergeant Hill. This is second team command. How copy? RAV AAF Command. First team has been lost. GD Ward gave the order to detonate the charges. Master Sergeant Hill. But they. God damn it. Move out! Let's rip her a new one! The sound of explosions are heard in the background, as the rest of the team escapes. End log 1757 1945 Closing Notes GD Ward declared Operation Crocane a massive success. The 31 members of Captain Phillips' fire team who are lost in combat were posthumously awarded the Lion's Cross Medal of Valor for their service. The Lion's Cross Medal of Valor was a RAVAAF specific accolade awarded to those of exceptional service and merit by GD War. Their deaths were attributed to several other non anomalous centric operations on the Western and Eastern fronts. RPC 580 Mod Registered Phenomena Code 580 Object Class Gamma Red Hazard Types Aggression Grouped Sapient Biohazard Mind Regression Microscopic Containment Protocols Several single-cell instances of RPC-580A are to be stored at Site-008's Disease Control Cold Storage Wing. In the event that a stored capsule of RPC-580 mutates into its multi-celled parasitic form, or expands to greater than 30% of its initial mass, research staff are to terminate said instance via incineration. All research and containment staff assigned to RPC-580A must be checked for external hemorrhages prior to their shift. Even minor external hemorrhages, classified as Grade 1 bleeds, have been deemed a serious containment risk. While actively working with live RPC-580 cells, Staff must maintain Class V biohazard precautions, including but not limited to gamma-level hazmat suits. Research teams are to remain on-site within the cold storage wing's adjacent isolation housing units for up to 24 concurrent hours while on shift, and remain in the adjacent DECOM center for no less than 12 hours post-shift. In the event of a containment breach, contaminated sections of the lab are to be immediately incinerated and ASF teams are to respond with handheld flamethrowers. An additional heavy weapons ASF unit must remain on call in case any infected personnel transforms into an RPC-580-1 instance. All responding personnel must also observe Class V biohazard precautions. Description: RPC-580 is the collective designation for a series of polymorphic blood-borne pathogens of unknown genera. This designation also extends into classifications of several therianthropic entities, which stem from a symbiotic relationship between infected humans and the respective parasite. RPC-580A are single-celled parasitic organisms, similar to those of the genus Plasmodium. A genus of unicellular eukaryotes that are obligate parasites of vertebrates and insects. The early stages of their life cycle parallel other protozoans at a hyper-accelerated rate. Rapid binary fission occurs at such an advanced speed that the internal temperatures of RPC-580A cells will rise till they begin to boil their cytoplasm. Due to this, the entity's maximum lifespan is approximately one hour outside of a host body. However, once inside a human host, RPC-580A cells will begin to expand till they match the average erythrocyte size growing from 2 to 8 micrometers in diameter. From there, RPC-580A cells metamorphize into genetically identical replicas of the host's blood. During this process, the host will experience fever-like symptoms and light bleeding from the mouth and eyes as the body's blood supply rapidly increases. The pseudoparasitic cells quickly replace the host's entire supply of corpuscles and plasma within the body. 
RPC-580 is capable of completely overtaking a host's circulatory system in under three minutes. Once the infection has replaced the host's blood with the parasite, the subject is then capable of transforming into an RPC-580-1 instance. The methods in which the transformative process is triggered are still being researched, as there is no discernible cause. RPC-580-1 instances, even in their human form, are resistant to most diseases, cancers, poisons, and are able to filter high-intensity radiation. Additionally, RPC-580-1 instances have displayed increased strength and agility far beyond any normal human capacity. Reports dating back to 1944 mention beasts moving faster than a speeding truck, and a pack taking out a Sherman tank. Although, RPC-580 infections also display several negative side effects, which include leukocytosis or overproduction of white blood cells, possibly due to the body rejecting the parasite, polyphagia, also referred to as hyperhunger, exclusively towards raw meat, pulmonary embolism, and thrombosis due to constant rapid coagulation of the blood, intense myelodysplastic syndrome leading to the complete loss of blood production, the loss of higher cognitive function while in an RPC-580-1 state, Wendigo psychosis leading to uncontrolled RPC-580-1 transformations, a psychosis characterized by an uncontrollable desire to eat human flesh. Addendum 580-01 Medicinal Study Following the discontinuation of GD War's position, and the termination of his Deus Mortalis policy, several researchers at Site-008 began testing the possible medicinal usages of RPC-580. The Deus Mortalis or Mortal God policy was set by G.D. War following his promotion to the Global Directorate. The policy stated that any anomaly utilized by enemy force or that challenged the sovereignty of humanity was marked for termination post-study. The study, which began in 1970, saw the resiliency of RPC-580A cells showed against diseases such as hepatitis and swine flu. Out of 193 studies performed on tissue samples infected with various diseases, ranging from HIV to lymphatic cancer throughout the following years, RPC-580 displayed a 100% cure rate. Unfortunately. As a consequence of RPC-588's fragile nature and a containment breach caused by RPC, all viable testing samples of RPC-580 were destroyed in 1989. Lead researcher, Dr. Hansik, proposed an excavation of the Führerhauptquartier Werewolf compound in an attempt to find new RPC-588A samples, and to learn more about the anomaly's possible origins. We have a mass grave out there that may hold the key to a real panacea, and we can't touch it because some megalomaniac tried to make it into a crater fifty years ago? Surely the Iron Initiative could study the anomaly jointly with us. I know it's on their land, but we have to do something. Excerpt from Dr. Hansik's letter to GDCMDR Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, and the subsequent collapse of the Iron Initiative, GD Commander seized the opportunity and approved Dr. Hansik's request. Sierra-06 War Criminals has been tasked with supporting the operation, along with a small RSS division from Site-008. Recovery Log 580-02 Department Protection Sierra-06 Research Anomaly Experimentation Team Staff Dr. Hansik, S-0 Krieg, S-1 Kiev, S-2 Dolch, S-3 Tote Mission Task Anomaly Recovery RPC-580 Forward Intel gathered by ACI operatives in the region led the team to the destroyed GARD facility's remains. Due to GD War's distrust of the Soviets, they had not been made aware of Operation Crocane or the bioweapon compound. All five members of the recovery team have been equipped with Class V biohazard suits, complete with Geiger-Muller counters and AECR devices. 
the RSS personnel assigned to the mission have been stationed at the tunnel's entrance. They have been equipped with several experimental transitional containment units by the members of Site-00-H Prolab Division. In the event the recovery team comes into contact with an RPC-580-1 instance, they must attempt to capture the entity alive. Begin Log 1255 1991 A loud explosion is heard as the entrance is cleared of rubble. S-0 Krieg Right. So if there was anything awake down there, they're up now. S-3 Tote Heh, <laughs> good one. Dr. Hansik. Yes, we're all comedians here. Let's get down there, though, if you don't mind. You heard the spooks. We aren't supposed to be. Referring to ACI officers. S-1 Keeb. Oh yeah, Lapbag? What are you- S-0 Creek. Can it. The good doctor is right. He wants his little samples, and I want to know what's down there. Move out! The team moves in silence into the tunnels checking radiation and coherency levels at consistent intervals. S2 Dolch Hold on, sir. I've got something here. Some slight SVs and a 0.2 drop in coherency. Sievert is the International Derived Unit of Measurement of Ionizing Radiation. S0 Krieg Well, that was fast. Doc, is there something you aren't telling us? Dr. Hansik No. I promise I'm just as surprised as you are. There's been nothing to suggest there may be some sort of spatial anomaly. S0 Krieg Raj, keep an eye on those readings, Dolch. We didn't come geared for some sort of extra-dimensional bullshit. S2 Dolch Copy, sir. Extraneous audio emitted as the team clears several more obstructions. S3 Tote Hold up. Got a body here. Looks like he's been dead a long time. S0 Krieg Let me see. Slight rustling can be heard. He was one of ours. Dog tag says Shearman. S1 Kiev. You mean what's left of him? Bone bag, look. S0 Krieg. Watch your shit, Kiev. Don't speak ill of the dead. Especially ones that had more bravery than you and their pinky. Anything you need on him, Doc? Dr. Hansik. No. Looks like he died without even turning. Ripped apart in an instant. Rest his soul. S0 Krieg. Amen, Doc. Let's keep moving. Extraneous audio emitted. Several warning signs from the AECR and Geiger counter can be heard. S0 Krieg. Speak to me, Dolch. How's it looking? S2 Dolch. Still bearable, sir. Possible gamma radiation decay with a 0.5% coherency drop now. Readings get worse as we head towards that big opening. S0 Krieg. That's our destination, then. Echoing footsteps are heard as the group moves into the opening. S2 Dolch This has to be the source of the radiation. We've nearly doubled the reading since we got in here. What the fuck is that? S0 Krieg Same question, Doc. What are we looking at? Dr. Hansik I have no idea. It looks like… arms? See the joint still embedded into the sidewall? S1 Kiev an arm? Are you kidding me? It's got to be thirty meters long. Dr. Hansik. Looks like it got scales as well. Made of stone, perhaps? What do you make of it? S3 Tote. Yeah, I can see it. Look. You can see the bones through there and some big-ass claws at the end of it. It looks like someone's been eating it, though. S2 Dolch. I bet they were. Rustling noise faintly heard as Dolch kicks a bone on the ground. Faint, wet crunching noises are heard on the recording, but are not noticed by the team. S3 Tote Jesus, there has to be forty to fifty bodies down here. Look at the shape of them, too. Dr. Hansik They look like Dash Ones, but they're mutated beyond anything I've ever seen. Look at the teeth growing out of this one's femur. Unknown voice They were all that's left. We were all trapped down here. Wrestling heard as the team readies their weapons. S0 Krieg Who's there? Unknown voice I'm so hungry. Please help me. Please. Dr. Hansik We are here to help just… S0 Krieg Slow up, Doc. Everyone sound off. S2 Dolch S2 S3 Tote 
S3. Creaking noises. S0 Krieg. Kiev, where's S1? Unknown voice. I'm sorry. I'm just so hungry. I ate him. S0 Krieg. All right, we're out. Triangle formation and get your fire line set. Doc, get in the middle and follow our lead. Dr. Hansik. Right. Unknown voice. Please no. I'm so sorry. I can't help it. I ate them all here. We held them back for days until they tore each other apart. We tried to make it out, but we were too weak. S Zero Creek. Keep talking, you Nazi fuck. Unknown voice. Nazi? No, they were all gone when we got here. Creaking noises. The only beasts left were the villagers they left behind. Most beasts were only slaves turned soldiers by the hunger. I'm so hungry. Dr. Hansik, when you got here, what's your name? Unknown voice. Phil something. I've been here so long, cold and hungry. Creaking noises. Please, I'm so hungry. S Zero Krieg. Captain Phillips? Unknown voice. Yes, I'm so hungry again. I'm sorry, I have to eat. Automatic fire drowns out the audio. S3 tote. Jesus, what the fuck was that? That wasn't a wolf. S0 Krieg. Doc, what did we just see? Dr. Hansik. It looked like the bones we saw back in the cave. The gross. He's splitting apart. Captain Phillips. Yes, it hurts. We had to eat. We ate the other wolves and the god arms. The meat was old and hard. Unreal. Each bite made my mouth burn and my blood boil. I could feel nothing but the need to eat. Please, let me eat you. Heavy footsteps and loud creaking noises are heard again as the team returns fire. S3 tote. God, he got me! He Dragon noises are heard amidst the gunfire, followed by a loud tearing crunch and lapping sounds. S0 Creek. Shit, quick! Move now while it's busy! Captain Phillips. I'm sorry. Please kill me. I can't handle the constant hunger. I didn't mean to kill him. I just need new blood. S0 Creek. Don't look back. Doc, get ahead of me. Dolch, radio up and get those RSS bucks ready with a cage. S2 Dolch. Raj. Captain Phillips. I didn't mean to. I didn't want to kill Babcock. He was all I had left, and I squeezed him in his sleep until he burst like a blister. The new blood took away the pain. I'm so cold, and the old blood hurts. S0 Krieg. There's light ahead. Go, go, go! Captain Phillips. Don't go! Please kill me! Creaking and tearing noises are heard as Captain Phillips' skin tears from the movements. S2 Dolch. Now! Drop the cage! A heavy thud is heard as a transpositional gamma-level containment cell is dropped on the entity. End log. 1435 1991 Closing Notes Following the apprehension of Captain Phillips, now designated as RPC-580-2, a brief field study was performed on the entity. This new instance displays several new anomalous traits not observed in the standard RPC-580-1 instances. Most notably, the entity exudes a mimetic area of effect, causing those around it to feel minor palophagia into Wendigo psychosis. The strength of the effect is dependent on the hunger level shown by the entity. Additionally, RPC-580-2 appears to be exceedingly emaciated, with large portions of its hide showing levels of complete necrosis. Along the heavily rotted portions of the back and upper arms, researchers discovered several vestigial tooth-filled mouths comprised of teratomatous tumors. It is believed that at this stage, the entity is no longer able to transform back into its human appearance. It is unable to bleed, and most of its internal organs no longer function. Radiological readings taken from the Pure Hop Quartier Werewolf tunnels match the signature left after Blue Dawn events. 
The implication of the existence of multiple RPC-399 instances is currently pending further study. Note from Dr. Hansik. Due to the entity's mimetic area of effect, it has been sent to Site-017-B for continued observation. I was wrong to think there was some grand answer hidden here. All protozoans are capable of entering a dormant cystic state for survival, and I think we just saw what RPC-580s look like. I can only pray they heighten the classification of this one and reassign me. I don't want to remember any of this.